Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for being here and watching my video. Uh, if you like what you see in this video and in my other videos, please consider subscribing and sharing because it really helps grow my channel. And for this video here, I'm going to show you how to split the tails, how to do the woven body, how to do this interesting wing case here, which is probably quite obvious and a couple of more tricks and techniques. Uh, this is going to be uh, very useful for other flies too, nymphs, dries as well. So without any further ado, let's get into tying. So first of all, I'm going to use hook, which is size 16. It's RX and it's freshwater uh, traditional nymph barbless, as you can see. Uh, I use this hook primarily because of the long shank, as you can see. I have quite a shank to work with, and it's size 16. Uh, it has pretty strong wire, considering it's size 16, so it's suitable for bigger fish as well. I'm gonna start with very strong but thin thread, which is simply nano silk, in 18 odd or 30 denier. Always start your thread. Uh, well, in this case I can do something else. I showed it in probably last video, so I'm gonna go with the jam hitch and I'm going to uh, I'm going to use this pr pr like primarily because it's useful to save some uh, let's save some thread, but it's not thread, it's like preventing bulk on your fly, nothing else. I mean, we don't need bulk on small flies. On big flies, you can allow yourself to have some bulk. From time to time, counter spin your thread to make it flat. Um, again, preventing bulk. Okay, now I'm gonna secure this bead a little bit here. And I'm going to use this figure of eight. So, after a couple of figure of eights, you can go around the shank which will fix with uh, which will actually prevent from spinning those wraps so to just be secure just do it a couple more times and because we are using very strong thread you can pull on it now for the tail I'm going to use Coq de Leon and I'm going to use just three barbs uh, before I start tying it, it's not important to do the split tail technique, definitely. It just looks pretty. Fish, for sure, won't mind if you if you use any other technique, if you just put some rooster here, if you don't have cocktail on, of course. Uh, it's just up to you what you're going to use. Uh, I found myself to prefer flies that I like, not necessarily those pretty flies, but I prefer to use flies that I like uh, so I'm more confident with them. That's like just me, but I think it's with m most people. I don't know. Tell me what about you? Like, do you prefer a s certain type, like buggy flies? You wouldn't ever consider fishing, for example, realistic or semi-realistic flies. Now, I haven't mentioned, but I left piece of thread, and that's what I'm going to use to split the thread, the tail. Now. I'm just gonna work with it a little bit like so so it's a little bit split obviously it won't stay like this but it will be easier for me to go around and catch as you can see those tails now don't pull if you pull too hard it'll just move your thread away from tails and you won't do anything so here on this moment in this moment just don't do anything too much Okay, I'm gonna counter spin it a little bit. See if everything is right. I'm gonna tighten this a little bit. I'm gonna tighten the other one. No, no that's the wrong one, obviously. I'm gonna release the pressure, return the tail because I made a mistake. And obviously, now it's okay. I thought I'm gonna do a little bit more. Now, as you can see, I'm not moving away from me, this this thread, this straight thread. The trick to it is very simple. Go around with little pressure 
and then when you're above just pull the pressure no pressure pressure no pressure pressure and this is how you prevent this if you just go like this it will go around your hook eventually now I need something that's caught up in my dubbing dispenser and this is embroidery thread the reason why I'm using embroidery thread is because I'm gonna make this nice woven, fly, uh, woven body and it's as you can see it's it has more threads that are spun into itself so I'm just gonna use one of these this is two so I need one more to remove okay so I have one color ready and then I need one more and I have another one so I'm going to put okay like so and then towards me and then look at this I'm just gonna pull on the thread and then place it on the side of the hook and then I'm gonna go pretty close to the tails but without catching tails with a thread leave your thread to rest somewhere so it's not in your way snip out this success because it's not used for anything now I'm gonna do the same with this piece of thread here Gonna catch it like so, trying to avoid no, no pressure. Did I catch? Okay, the tail is here. Okay, now no pressure, pressure, no pressure, pressure towards me, towards me, towards me. And as you can see, this piece of thread is not moving. Okay, now a little bit. So, oops, I applied wrong pressure. So, no pressure, pressure, no pressure, pressure. And then again, I made a mistake. Anyway, I need to flatten the thread a little bit. Oops, I corded it up. Now, I'm gonna stop more or less where I want my thorax to begin. And this is the reason why I like this hook. I have plenty of room to build up everything here. Now, I'm gonna whip finish, but it's not whip finish and finish ply, obviously. Uh, scissors. Now, uh, let me try to record this for a while with a chest camera. So, I'm going to use this lighter one and I'm going to put it over the darker one and go behind it to make a knot okay and when you make a knot you have this like a circle over here if you pull up the darker one you will create a small loop In that loop you need to go over the hook and then just slide it slowly over the hook and slide it all the way until the tails and I'm gonna help it a little bit with my nails okay now tighten horizontally and a little bit to the back and then again same lighter thread go, goes back and around the brown creating this knot and then pull up up the brown one slide it over the hook slowly tighten and then when you reach the previous knot just go against it press against it and press to both sides like so now again we go with lighter thread behind creating this loop and then again brown one slides now let's do it in this real time more or less how I would do it if I wasn't recording so just get the idea how fast you can go 
I mean, I haven't been doing this for a couple of months, so I'm a little bit rusty too. But it's quite, this is like probably the easiest weaving technique that you can get. So I'm just going and creating this nicely uh, colored curve contrasty body. So I think this is enough from this view. I'm going to go back to macro. So as I was saying, you go around with your yellow thread and then just put this loop with darker one on the top because the darker one is supposed to be on the top. Or whatever you prefer, it's up to you. Now I'm just gonna go with this. Now when you have reached the time point for the thorax you can reattach your thread and then what I do is I use I can't call it a trick but more like a help like a tool helping tool it's hook eye to help me catch the thread so I'll just go with a couple of loose wraps as you can see I'm just going loose here and then like I'm not going one on the top of another rather one next to each other and then I'll just cut, cinch it down and you can see it's like it's changed changed color meaning that I did my job correctly I guess so I'm gonna remove this because it's in my way now you can use whatever you want for the thorax I used peacock over here but you can use peacock dubbing ice dubbing uh, you can use some other dubbing, you can use Antron if you like uh, and uh, I think I, would, I will go uh, I will go with Peacock again because this is going to be my thumbnail I guess so I'm just gonna take a couple of barbs as you can see I took four and I'm going to catch it like so like by the middle just gonna take one more two okay it's going to create V-shape now I'm gonna just collect it more or less collect it let me see I'm trying to see how far I went towards the back and now I will attach I will add dubbing not attach and dubbing is hair's fur from the mask uh, mixed with some eyes dubbing that's shiny stuff you can see in the video and I'm crying, trying to make moderately loose noodle so not too loose, not too thick, uh, not too tight just everything is to be moderate Oops. Okay. and this is going to suggest some legs some movement here I'm going to uh, get over the peacock barb with my dubbing a little bit and then go back just forgot one tiny detail here I don't like the color of this thread so I'm just gonna do the black one here and I'm gonna do the black one where I need to finish so as you can see it's quite easy now for those of you who are fishing for trout I would suggest to use peacock dubbing instead of this real peacock uh, for obvious reasons because trout, trout will just destroy this and for those of you who are fishing for grayling I think you're good to go without any problems with peacock which I prefer being a natural material now I'm gonna finish off this Okay, okay. Now, when you cut this thread, because it's GSP, just go with your scissors through it, and then because I have serrated scissors, I can go with this serrated blade and just sew through this instead of cutting it. Now, let me see what we got. 
we got a little bit asymmetrical tail which I'm going to correct right now because I probably touched it somewhere but it's not that important we can call it cripple uh, we got ourselves pretty nice looking buggy nymph that has contrasty body uh, contrasty may be important I'm not quite sure yet to be honest I've heard that um, or I watched video or I read something Lance Egan he's a USA competitor I mean he's fly fishing competitor for the USA team and he said in one of his videos I think that he prefers those Czech nymphs because they have contrasty body so I think the same can apply here we have contrast between thorax no sorry wing case and the abdomen and then abdomen has contrast by itself uh, the split tail here is just for aesthetic reasons obviously orange bead is to be to make it more visible because everything else is like supernatural so it can actually look like a nymph that's sucking on an egg of a fish if nymphs are doing that I'm not sure probably not but th there's an idea uh, so egg sucking nymph whatever uh, we got ourselves a nice looking buggy fly that will catch some fish for sure so guys please tell me what you think about this fly leave it down in the comments below uh, thank you very much for your time and see you next week